12 to 1 bar, but Luxembourg, that 2 to 1 might not last, Roy. Uh, there's plenty of money for it. I think it will shorten. He's told you. But not a lot of money for the first horse we're going to look at. This is Classic Causeway, the American Raider. Interestingly, he was uh, walking around the parade ring here with a pony in front of him, and he was quite stirred up, which is odd, because since the pony's left, he's calmed down uh, significantly. This is quite unusual compared to how an American horse would prep for their races over there. They'd be saddled in the stables or the stalls, and then they go to the uh, parade ring. Uh, this is all a lot more lengthy than he'd be used to, so it's not surprising to see him playing up. As a result, he's walking quite slowly, which won't help the chances of the ones that are behind. You probably want to walk on a stride or two. He is a Belmont Derby winner, so grade one winner. However, he's probably up against it a bit in this company. He's likely to go forward in the run, so watch for him on the front end. Now, this is a good-looking horse. God, doesn't he fill the eye? Bay Bridge, he's a Sir Michael Stout's runner here. And when we talked about the big three at the start of the day, he was very much one of them because he was second to Luxembourg at the Curra last time. He won at the end of last year uh, the champion stakes, beating Adair that day. So all the forms kind of tying in together here. He is sensational looking, real man. Like there's nothing boyish about him, super muscly, super strong. He's got the lip chain on there just keeping him quiet. He's got a ring bit as well and the cross nose band. He's obviously a little bit of a handful. But the American horse walking slowly is probably not helping because these horses want to just stride on a, a fraction. In behind, we've got number six. This is my Prospero, another extremely good-looking horse. If you want to know what a good-looking horse is like, then Bay Bridge and my Prospero are two really good examples because I saw this horse also at Newbury and the lock-in stakes, and he was the pick of the paddock for me that day. Uh, but that was only over a mile, and he ran well, but looked to be screaming out to go a bit further. So mile two today for him. And there's a lot of word on the street that he's in good form at home. So look for him potentially to upset the big three. Number one is Adair. And just before you came to me, I was having a look at each of these individuals in the parade ring. And I was expecting him to really stand out because we all know he's a big, strong, imposing horse. And a new market last time out, he looked really well. And maybe it's because there's a lot of big, strong, good-looking horses in here, but he's not quite jumping out at me as much today. It looks like he's lightened up a little bit, potentially weakened a little bit over the hind quarters. Charlie Apple will probably be watching this thinking, what on earth are you talking about? But not a massive positive for me in the parade ring. Now, number five uh, is a little bit excited, uh, showing off somewhat in the parade ring. This is Mostadaf. I was just chatting to Bloodstock agent Charlie Gordon Watson, and he said he saw this horse winning in Saudi Arabia, and he was super impressive. Arguably, he didn't beat the kind of calibre of competition he's meeting here today. He was then beaten in Dubai, but he did chase Equinox the whole way around, uh, who was a super impressive winner that day. He should know better than this. He's a five-year-old. He shouldn't be uh, getting himself quite so excited in the parade ring. Naughty boy. Uh, and let's have a look at Luxembourg. I've always struggled a little bit to get a handle on this horse. However, he, uh, he put me in my place last time, having thought he was really disappointing on his first start of the year when he only finished fifth. He came out and, uh, and won the Tats Gold Cup in super impressive style. Ryan Moore was a brilliant ride from him that day on the front end. He led and he made his horse's mind up. And the horse really responded for his urgings. He really knuckled down well and fought hard and defeated Baybridge in the process that day so it's a real tough one I wouldn't like to put you off any of the horses here as they head out onto the track yeah Francesca it's a group one that's got increased prize money increased prestige of late as well small field Ruby could this get tactical oh I think it will Ed what we don't have is a pacemaker Bally Doyle haven't got one in and neither do Godolphin so it's going to be quite tactical now if you watch the Tattersall's Gold Cup last time Baybridge was drawn in stall one stall two was Luxembourg and when they broke they broke quite side by side Richard Kingscote and Ryan Moore but Ryan was intent on getting in front on Luxembourg it took him the best part of a furlong to get there but eventually Ryan does 
get in front and slides across in front of Baybridge. Now he's probably the only front runner in the race and a day are, even though he's won a King George and a Derby over a mile and a half, he doesn't ever front run. He always gets the lead and he was happy to get a lead off his stable companion at Newmarket last time. He can race keenly if he's sent forward so maybe that's a, a tactic from William Buick to try and get him cover. Now yesterday, Bolshoi Ballet down the inside, Ryan Moore was drawn stall one over a mile and quarter here and he rolled forward to get into the position he wanted to be in. Now down the outside then in the blue and yellow, that horse drifts across and I think Ryan is going to do the same again and looks about today. So he'll end up in pole position in front down the inside he'll be number one. Two, I think it'll be classic causeway, the American horse will get across three will be a day are just behind them with my Prospero and behind that would be Mosh to Death and possibly Bay Bridge now, I think it will be tight again, it'll be interesting, Johnny was earlier was saying a day are Bay Bridge should go at Luxembourg Johnny I think a day are might and if you were Richard Kingscote, would you sit behind and let a day are soften up Luxembourg and see if you could get lucky I, I definitely, if I was I, I riding a day are or Bay Bridge I'd get in front of a Luxembourg, I think Luxembourg has got that turn of pace, he gave him a brilliant ride at, at um, the Curra Ryan, he went you know he went so slow and he quickened up in front of Bay Bridge and he could never get him back if it was me I'd be making the running I'd be making the run on day are, or I'd be going forward on Bay Bridge to get in front of Ryan Moore in the stall one and I'd be making it a test of stamina you know Luxembourg looked great the other day he was able to sit and quicken off a slow pace I'd, br- I'd draw this into a you know a, a, a real battle up the last two furlongs and um, a day are stays a mile and a half well Bay Bridge stays a mile and a quarter really well I wouldn't be sitting behind and letting anybody dictate to me in this race so the back end of the parade here with Luxembourg who we just saw winning the Tattersall's Gold Cup and behind him will be last year's second the champion stakes winner on Champions Day Baybridge can Sir Michael Stout go to 83 Royal Ascot winners and join Aidan O'Brien Rishi it's lovely to catch up with Charlie Appleby, of course, at AR, his runner, and what looks to be in a tremendous race, Charlie. How confident are you about his chances today? I'm very happy with the horse. Uh, as confident to say we're going to be winning in a race like this would be uh, probably pushing the boat a bit too far. But look, it's, uh, he comes here in great order. Um, it's a race that we've had our, you know, our eye on since last year. Um, obviously, he had that uh, prep run in the Gordon Richards in, in soft ground there, and he, he won very well. He's come forward for that, uh, and he's ticked every box coming into this today um, but it's a great race as you quite rightly say Rich and, and, and the one thing about it is tactically it's going to be very interesting uh, in, in what's going to go on, go on out there should we say It is, I mean I presume that you want to keep those close to your chest but also I think we can read into it, you don't want to have Luxembourg get the sort of lead he had when he won the Talisauce Gold Cup in Ireland would you? No, for sure. Um, and at the end of the day, look, we're a mile and a half. You know, we, we, we're proven around here over a mile and a half. So um, stamina is not uh, not a worry. Uh, obviously, the American horse, we all know, everyone's probably thinking the same. That potentially, he could go forward. But um, you know, as I always say to any of these, you know, to William going out there, we've got a plan. But you know, the reason we got we we got these guys on board is they've got to make those decisions once those gates open. And can I just ask Charlie, are you concerned at all about? I'm sure you'd be well aware. People have spoken about the strike rate of your team comparison to normal. I mean, in fairness, that's a very high normal um, but the strike rate in May and June perhaps not what it was in the past few seasons one or two horses not quite at their best I thought Modern Games ran all right though yeah to, to, to personally honest with you Modern Games I thought you know if you look at it strictly by the book he, he finished where he did in the lock you know beating uh, Chind- you know, Chindit and uh, Park Rocco there so you know that, that was uh, that was literally the form from the from the lock to, to to yesterday uh, as respect to the four, rest of the form of the other horses the three year olds but Richie you can, you, can, you can make excuses if you like but if you're not good enough you're not good enough and and uh, you know potentially that's where some of our three-year-olds might just be um, you know I'm a, I'm a big believer in that uh, you know those horses that win the Dewhurst and the racing post trophies and national stakes those are the horses that you want to be looking forward to as three-year-olds and uh, unfortunately we didn't have any those last year but um, very much looking forward to this year with our two-year-olds we've got some nice two-year-olds coming along now and uh, as we all know with these two-year-olds in July August is normally when we start really kicking it into gear and so uh, we'll be all right <laughs> Of course you will. And best of luck here with that AR. Cheers, Charlie. Brilliant. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, mate. All Appreciate right, mate. it. Very honest, Charlie Appleby, as always. Let's try and talk about all six. Let's start with Adar Jason. Look, we, we we all know the races that he has won, and with Charlie saying that he stays at least this far, a lot of people will think Jockey must go really, really quick early and bring that into play. That's the surefire way to get one beaten is if you go too quick in the early stages. Buick has to be pinpoint accurate on the time 
to get and draw all the stamina out of the other runners over this trip. It's going to be a, a tight wire for him. Number two, Johnny, is Bay Bridge in the James Wigan colours. You worried about the quick ground? Um, the ground, no, I think it'll be OK from Ed. I think there's enough rain out there. It's, you know, it's, on the, it's, not, it's not the firm. Sometimes Asuka can get. I really like this horse, Michael Stout. He's trained by a genius. He knows how to win this race. This would, be a, would have been his main, one of his main targets for the year. I think, he, I think he's the horse they all have to beat. I, I like him. He looks really, really well today. Classic Causeways. Now a 66 to 1 chance. Yeah, won the Belmont Derby. Um, he actually beat National uh, Nations Pride, who's rated 118, and Stone Age, who's now rated 118. So, um, look, we're, we're completely forgetting about him in the market. Is he going to be the pace? Might well be. Number four is Luxembourg. You talked about head carriages yesterday with Paddington, Johnny. Is he similar? He's, he is similar. He's got that high head carriage. It doesn't seem to stop him, Ed. Um, he's, you know, was a very nice, it was a very nice win at the Curve the last time, although Ryan did ride him really well, and I do expect him to get a lot more pressure early in the race today. Shadwell have got Mostadaf, Francesca. You sounded a bit concerned about him in the paddock. <laughs> yeah, well, you probably, saw, you probably saw the reason why, because he was uh, being somewhat cultish in the paddock. Uh, he seems to have put his mind back on the job here today, but he wasn't helped by the kind of stacking up of the horses, walking really slowly as well. Uh, he's five, he's obviously still an entire, he's by Frankel. We have haven't seen him since he ran in Dubai. That was 88 days ago, and he might have a sneaky chance. Christopher Choi is here. See the Stars Connection, of course. My Prospero is very, very weak in the market, Johnny. A big concern. Yeah, well, the, the form yesterday of the lockings, you know, that's a concern. And Jason, will he stay? Will, 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 yeah. will, is he guaranteed to stay well, in, a, in a race that I think is going to be, I, I think it's going to be run at a hell of a pace? That, that, that's the question, to bring out a bit of improvement. Look, he, he was close up in the St. James's Palace, and his form ties in closely with a lot of these. Look at his price, though, 15 to 2. Luke? Interesting you're talking about Luxembourg. He's got a very, very long back. Um, he's obviously relatively straightforward because he's got no aids. He's got no nose band or, or anything on him, but he's not a horse that immediately catches the eye. Last one to go forward is Mostaraf for Jim Crowley. This is a quality race. Quality horses in a quality race. A million pounds for the Prince of Wales' stakes to feature on day two. Quality field jump away. And they are lethargic out of the stalls, having to be just rousted along, and Luxembourg moves to the lead. Classic Causeway, who was on edge in the paddock, is going to eyeball Luxembourg. Ryan Glass a glance across and having to invest a little bit in the battle for the lead. They now grab hold. My Prospero is nearly climbing on the back of them as Adeyar, now in full stride, also closes to Luxembourg. So that little joust didn't last very long, and Luxembourg now has the advantage from Classic Causeway in second by half a length. Adiar is third as they make their way into the bend. Right, Pospera races in fourth early on Bay Bridge and at the back Mostadaf as they make their way now right-handed. Luxembourg still a little bit pressed by Classic Causeway who's racing keenly in the eye line of the leader. Adiar in third place, the blue jacket by Prospero racing in fourth in the yellow with the purple star. Then Bay Bridge in the fifth place position has Mostadaf as they make their way steadily up the hill. Luxembourg still leading, Classic Causeway in second place, Adiar in third. My Prospero, Tom Marquand, is in fourth place at the moment. Baybridge still on the running rail as they climb uphill. And that was a over 13 second furlong. The gradient having something to do with it, but Luxembourg just trying to get a breather in. Mostadap is still last as they prepare now to spin the bend. Luxembourg, Classic Causeway in second place, Adiar on the heels, but no way of getting out. My Prospero is just nudged along in fourth place as the pace begins to lift. Then Baybridge and Mostadap moving into it as they pass the three. Luxembourg Classic Causeway, Adiar a little bit imprisoned on the inside, now spies a gap. My Prospero, Mostadap coming into it, and Baybridge looking for a way through. Luxembourg it is who has the lead. Adiar is now out in the clear. Mostadap down the outside, stakes his claim. Then Baybridge and My Prospero, and it's Mostadap who's gone past some big guns here in the Prince of Wales's. He's two lengths clear from Adiar. Baybridge, Luxembourg, My Prospero is staying off on the outside. But Mostadaf is running right away from some of the best horses in Europe. And Mostadaf for Jim Crowley and John and Thady Gosden have blunted some big guns. Luxembourg in second, Adair third, by Prospero and Bay Bridge. The three from the champion stakes are firmly put in their place and classic causeway. Mostadaf for John and Thady Gosden and Jim Crowley has rattled away with this. One by good four lengths. Luxembourg and Adair, my Prospero 
Rainbow and Baybridge, quality horses, but left in the wake of Mostadap, who quickened up smartly and showed no signs of stopping or coming back for a decisive victory. Jim Crowley, John and Thady Goldston, it's John's fifth success in the race. He obviously stares the license now with Thady, but that draws him level with Sir Henry Cecil in the late Shekhan Dan's colours, now carried by Shadwell Estates, Mostadap decisive winner of the Prince of Wales's. At 10 to 1, causing something of a surprise, beating the big guns impressively too, Jason. Where did that come from? Well, look, he, he, he ran in the Hardwick around here previously. They threw him in the deep end behind Alpenista over a long shot after he was super um, smooth in his Group 3 win at Kempton on the all-weather. All his previous tries up at top level, and he'd been found wanting. But that was a top-draw performance from him. No excuses. Also from last, because we were watching it thinking, they're not going that quick here. Ryan was able to get Luxembourg to the front. He had the American horse on his outside for a while, but the fractions weren't crazy. This horse had to sit in last and bide his time, and then he fairly just swooped around the outside of the field and put the race to bed. And as you mentioned, he finished behind him in a superstar in Dubai, that horse Equinox. Is well, I think he tried to chase him that day. He was and right on his tail, and Equinox just, you know... Yeah, and maybe they learned a lot going. today that he needed to be dropped in. I, I, I honestly, um, I thought they were going slow. I thought it was playing to Ryan, you know, playing to Ryan's strengths. But... The, they, they, they look slow coming up the straight, and he was the only one that he was the only one that quickened the way. And look, the second, third, fourth, fifth, they were just. So they were what, 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 what does this say about the rest of them? Sorry. What does this say about well, the rest of them? Well, that we, have... we had we had them what you know two or three pounds between the group, didn't we? And all of a sudden he's come through and put up that spectacular performance. He was handy over in Riyadh when he won by seven lengths. As Johnny was saying, goes to Dubai, gets lapped by Equinox. Oh my word, that that's by some way a career best. <laughs> I imagine Jim Crowley would have enjoyed that. He's with Matt. Yes, Batash may have retired, Baid may have retired, but the Group 1 winners keep flowing for this tremendous organisation and Jim Crowley. Jim, that was a romp for a horse that finished last of 20 in the arc at 56 to 1. Uh, yeah, I suppose it was, a, it was a fantastic run. John and Thady. They've done an amazing job with him, and uh, we learnt. Look, he, he bolted in in Saudi, a mile and, mile and a quarter fast ground. He didn't quite stay against Equinox. He was probably the only one who sort of served it up to him, went after him in Dubai, and he got tired. John and Thady brought him back. He's fresh. They've trained him unbelievable. You see him, and he's bouncing coming into the race today. And like I said, a mile and a quarter fast ground is fantastic, and it's great for shaking hisses here with her family, and it's fantastic. Angus Cole, the racing manager, of course, for this great organisation to my left, the man is known as God, and it almost felt like a godly performance. I mean, even you couldn't imagine Mossadoff just romping clear of Derby winners and multiple Group 1 winners. Uh, not like that, no. Uh, I, like, we've always held him in high regard, this horse, and he's, you know, he's a, he's a Franklin. He's probably only just coming to himself now, and as you can see, he's a big, strong horse, and he's probably just coming to his fore now. One to look forward to for the Eclipse and Judmont International. And Jim, it might continue for you. You've got the hot pot of the meeting in Al Asifa and also Huckham as well. So bodes well for the rest of the week. Fingers crossed. Good luck, Jimbo. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see how Al Asifa gets on in the Ribblesdale. She was devastatingly good A Goodwood last time. This was devastatingly good for Mostadav, John. It was. Like, when you look back at it, there was no excuses. Either. Like, as I said, I thought Ryan was in the box seat. I was a bit surprised. As I said, the two boys dropped in and they let him have it in front, although the American the American Raider did keep Ryan honest, but he still looked like he was in control. Um, maybe the signal signs were turned when Ryan pulled his stick through at the bottom of the straight. This horse just cruised up to them. He just cruised up there, and when he let him go, he clicked his five lens clear. What's he want to make him a really? You know, I didn't see it coming. But like, maybe, he, maybe he is the next superstar. In the Shadwell, blue and white, led in by Victor Konya and Tony Proctor, Shaker Hisser. Here to enjoy Mostadat winning the Prince of Wales Estates.
John Gosden first won this back in 1994. He won it the next year as well with Mutaram. He's winning it for a fifth time. Now the combo with Sun Thady, Mostadaf at 10 to 1. Second in the Hardwick, as you say, Jason. First this year in the Prince of Wales Estates. Our group one over 10 furlongs at 10 to 1. Luxembourg, the 2 to 1 favourite, a distant second, really. Adar was third. My Prospero, friendless in the market before the race and didn't feature much near the finish either. And getting quotes of 6 and 8 to 1 for the Cora Eclipse at Sandown in a few weeks' time. Very much comes into the mix for that kind of race, doesn't yeah. it? Judd Monson, things like that, Jason. It, it, it's amazing when you think he went off a 6 to 5 favourite for the Brigadier Gerard at Sandown and Baybridge absolutely lapped him up the hill there at Sandown. He's turned that form on his head, but obviously that's a year ago and they all change at a, at a different time. And your point, Francesca, did all of the four finishing second, third, fourth, fifth run below par or did he put up a career best? Could be a bit of both. I mean, it would be a strange coincidence for them all to run below par. I mean, on ratings, there wasn't a huge amount between them going into the race. Uh, so, arguably, this guy's just really improved. He had those two starts early on in the year. He's had a break. We're probably a bit guilty of uh, recency bias. We haven't seen him for a while and he had been racing abroad. Admittedly, he did still have to improve on his form from last year, but <laughs> improve he has. And Jim Crowley said he's by Frankel and they just keep getting better and he's trained by hey he knows how to train a winner or two Luxembourg finished second but did he have to go quicker than he wanted to go being pestered by the American horse early well Ryan looked over him at him after a furlong and he kind of I, I'm not sure what he said to me but he did get a bit of a breather but he was always just pestering him there from four out maybe he was going a little bit faster than ideal but hey you know, the signs were there at the bottom of the straight he was under pressure and he, he did keep going in fairness but just the same pace that is a winning smile from Victor there and a kiss for his beloved Mostadav too, Rishi. Well, I'm now in the winner's enclosure, obviously, with the magnificent Mostadav, who looked great all through the day. Sheikha Hissa, who we know uh, enjoyed great success last year with Bayid, and obviously we also got uh, Sheikh Mohammed uh, bin Mayad bin, Jum Abed bin Jumba al Baktoum. Don't want to get it wrong. Um, first of all, Sheikha Hissa, watching this horse today, I mean, it was just a very smooth performance. I can't imagine you would have had too many concerns throughout the race. Well, he's been breaking out of the start always uh, very well. He's been breaking last times out very well. So we were positive about him, even though he was a little bit on the outside. Um, other than that, we just wanted to let Jim to sit. And he knows the whole course very well, so we didn't give him instructions. Uh, just to sit, wait for him until he's ready, and then let him go. It was a very impressive turn of foot as well. Um, is that something that you think he's getting better at producing? Well, he's done that at, uh, in Saudi. Um, last time out in Maidan, he couldn't do it. He tried to catch up with Equinox, um, <laughs> which made him lose his second position, but we were trying to win the race. So if he keeps doing that, which is now becoming more often, then he should be fine. Sheikh Maktoum, what were the sort of expectations going into the race today? Were you expecting a performance quite as impressive as this? Optimistic. Uh, <laughs> We were quite optimistic, but uh, he performed well in the land. We're happy about it. Yeah. He most certainly performed well, and what he's done is he's given us encouragement for the fact that when we see him next, he could do something even more spectacular. I mean, where will you want to run him? Will it be the Eclipse? Well, it depends on the trainer at this moment. We're just <laughs> going to enjoy the win at the moment. <laughs> well, many congratulations. Thank I you. think it's almost time for the presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. It's so important to see Shaker Hissa enjoying it so much shadwell streamlined these days johnny is still winning on the big stage as we await the presentation and here comes queen camilla alongside his majesty's representative here at ascot sir francis brooke between the green coats and just look at the snappers there to record this and cameras it's all part of the pomp and ceremony here at royal ascot And just talking about Shadwell, Johnny, still so effective. Yeah, well, Sheikh Hamdan was a, was a brilliant man, loved his horses, you know, and like these big operations, they have wonderful mares, Ed. And it's all about, my wife keeps saying, it's all about the dam side, Ed. It's all about the good mares. And then they put them on the good stallions, and sometimes they click and sometimes they don't, but when they do, you can always, you're, you're always likely to get a horse, horse like this to and come what, through. What, what did we have? What did we have last year? And what, what have we had the last couple of seasons? Baid. Now he could go and stand for the stud as well, couldn't he? And he could be that superstar stallion that they've been looking for. 
the Naked Eye Up race, we talked about Judgments and we talked about Eclipses, Breeders' Cup. They've won and they're in, so maybe they'll eye up that towards the end of the season. Would maybe want to iron out um, some of his antics in the prelims because he's yes. a little bit edgy, isn't he? You know, that, we certainly weren't expecting a performance like that after he walked around here showing off himself. <laughs> Have you seen him do that before? I, I, no, I haven't. missed him last year. No? No. no? I honestly think it was because the American horse in front was making them walk so slowly that he was right on top of the horse in front. And admittedly, they were all uh, colts in the field. How, but... how nice of you to blame the American. <laughs> And this will be a moment to treasure. There's a lot of talk, and Bruff always talks about it, the importance of Her Majesty the Queen, the late Her Majesty the Queen, for owners in this country, people who've backed British racing. Well, this is a special moment for Sheikh Ahissa, receiving the trophy from the Queen. And that felt like a big moment. We did the Royal Procession earlier today, Francesca. A lot of talk about the King and Queen and the link with Royal Ascot. When the three cheers went up and then the roars of approval for the Royal Procession, I think that for the King in particular is a big moment, isn't it? Yes, and I think we well, we saw them here yesterday, so it was brilliant to have them on day one. And then back again today. And I think there's talk that they're going to be here every single day. So that shows a definite uh, support and commitment uh, to the meeting. And, and a uh, connection as well. Yeah, and a connection. They've got two runners today. We haven't uh, seen them yet. We've got Reach for the Moon in our next race and uh, Circle of Fire in the Queen's Vars, who Jason quite fancies. We might yet see a royal winner today. Which would be great. I think Nick Smith's wishes this week would be a foreign winner. We've had that with the Americans. They might have more, but also a royal winner. As the Queen speaks to John Gosden, who trains for the King and Queen, of course. He gets his prize, and Jim Crowley will be next, who's now had 15 Royal Ascot winners. Former National Hunt jockey, of course, Jim. first Royal Ascot winner was back in 2011, 12 years ago, Prohibit winning in the King stand. Well done to Jim. And I'm sure Victor Cogne, who we saw his big smile, will get a prize too after the Prince of Wales is. What did you make of it, Ruby? I thought it was a great race to watch it, and Mostadaf was a very, very good winner. Now, to start, I think it went pretty much like I thought it might. Ryan Moore was very keen to get Luxembourg out, and he broke well, but a day are missed for William Blue, Buick in the all, all blue, and down the outside came Classic Cause with the American horse. Now, they did roll to Swindley Bottom, but you can see Ryan, he gets to Julian Lepreau or says something, turns his head, and they do steady. Jim Crowley, he didn't take part. He just went back on Mostadaf, back beside Bay Bridge. And as they climbed up then from Swindley Bottom, and the race intensifies, my Prospera got a little bit keen there but he switched off straight away Ryan was nudging but he wasn't travelling the one that I was drawn to was Jim Crowley he's going so easy his body language compared to everybody else's and this horse shoots down the outside an incredible turn of foot Baybridge didn't get the clearest of runs and the red colours in behind but that said he still doesn't make any ground on those in front of him a day are gets by Luxembourg in second and third but Luxembourg gets back by him but Mastodaf just goes all the way to the line I was in Dubai I watched Equinox beating, beating him and I thought Exynox was an incredible horse and this only confirms that for me anyway. We talk about global and the globalisation of flat racing. I'd say Equinox could be one of the best horses in the world. It does make you wonder just how good Equinox is. Could be something absolutely spectacular. And that's the one thing I suppose this meeting hasn't got this year, the Japanese runners. Yes, they're not here and they're very, very powerful at these mile and a quarter, mile and a half races. You know, they've got, got, got great horses around the world. And it would be nice to see them coming over here because this is our peak time. Like they're peaking in Dubai and Saudi and in America, but this is our peak time and they need to come here. Let's hear from the winning trainer. Sorry, Johnny. Yes, John Gosden has just obviously been part of the presentation. Um, John, just to get your reaction to that performance, it's caught one or two people on the hop a little bit. Yeah, I suppose so. The ground stride out, which he really enjoys, he likes to bounce off good ground, and it was uh, going to be soft. He's run a couple of times on soft, and he's, he's laboured on it. But he got his perfect ground today, and in fairness to him, he won the Neon Cup in uh, Saudi Arabia and Riyadh in great style by about 12 lengths. And then he took on probably the best horse in the world, Equinox. Uh, I mean, he 
late mile, and then. he well he tried to make a race of it and the other horse was, was just in another league when he didn't stay the mile and it cost him second place and he dropped back to fourth but he tried hard we freshened him up with this I spoke to Sheikha Hissam to say we, this is the race to go for we're going to run the bigger Gerald we came straight here and she's done amazing because her father died obviously and, uh, and had a lot of mares and horses worldwide and she's rationalised the whole programme bringing it together she's here with her husband today she's recently married and uh, it's a great achievement to, to put this together Bayid last year and then another horse possibly worth going to the stud as a stallion and that's what it's all about that sort of performance today makes us excited to see him in action again next it, it looks fairly certain that he's a 10 furlong fast ground horse so is it a case of the eclipse judmont etc i always find the eclipse comes too close i think it's you, you matter two weeks he's had a big race today i would wait for the judmont international that would be the race for him and he likes to run fresh you know too many nights out on the town <laughs> you know, we don't bounce like we used to well we can't have that um, and finally would he go back up in trip at all or no. you'll stick to the no it's very much mile a quarter and Jim said he moved too soon and I, I knew he'd quicken I didn't think he'd quicken and go away like that so he's I think the Jabon International should be the big target well if you do allow yourself a night out enjoy thank you so hold fire if you fancy him for the Coral Eclipse. That sounds like it won't happen. After Mustard App won the Prince of Wales, is we're just getting going. We've got the Hunt Cup next, then the Queen's Vase. Then we'll switch to ITV4 later for the Windsor Castle. A lot more to come. Stay with us. Well done to the Gosdens.